shadow knows. <laughs> Your local blue coal dealer presents The Shadow. These half-hour dramatizations are designed to forcibly demonstrate to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Before we present the first act of today's Shadow story, a brief reminder to you homeowners. You all know what an unpredictable month March is. The weather's blustery, bitter cold one day and mild the next. And I don't have to remind you how very dangerous those extremes of temperature are to the health of everyone in your family. Now, if you want to ensure steady, comfortable warmth inside your home and help prevent late winter colds and illness, here's what you do. Call your nearest blue coal dealer. Get a supply of blue coal, the quality-tested hard coal that guarantees you steadier, more healthful heating performance and satisfaction. Don't gamble with just any ordinary coal. Insist on blue coal. Ask for it by name. It's the coal that's trademarked blue, so you can identify it at a glance. It's the coal that will give you better heat with less furnace attention. As our story opens, we find Lamont Cranston with his friend Margot Lane in his apartment, busily turning the dials of a shortwave radio receiver. Margot, a few nights ago... I came across a very peculiar noise on the radio. Couldn't figure out what it was, so I got my recording set out tonight, and I'm going to make a record of this strange broadcast. Nick, I remember when you first got the recorder. We recorded everything we could think of. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, particularly our duets. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Start the machine. We'll record it right now. Lord, it's the I've ever heard. It doesn't make any sense. I can't make head or tail out of it. It doesn't sound like a human voice. And yet it's... Wait. I'll pay our recording back in the phonograph. See, now, wait a minute. There. Can you make it play slower? We might be able to analyze it better. Oh, yes. I'll slow it down. We cannot bring it down on land at any Margo, oh. it's a man's voice. Why, it's very clear when the record is played slower... What a simple trick. They've merely made a record at a slow speed and played it fast so you can't get it. But how could anyone receive the message? They must have a recording outfit like mine and play it back at the low speed. Let's listen to the record again. Yes. Yeah. Just when I started. There's the group. Operator Steve, Operator Steve, you better play lens here tonight. This mystery ship will be destroyed tomorrow. Tomorrow? We will fly this plane to the Gordon Lightship and then 10 miles due south. Gordon we Lightship? We will cruise to that point in our boat and pick us up. This plane will be destroyed at sea. What do you suppose? We cannot bring it down on land at any cost. It will never be recovered. Why? We have the only existing set of plans and the designer is dead. Operator 1 in command. Do you know what that means, Margot? No, I don't know. A new army plane is due tomorrow or next day at the aerodrome. It's one of the most revolutionary inventions in the history of military aviation. Only one of these planes has been built. And not one of the men who worked on its construction was permitted to know all its secrets. And its designer is dead. Oh, I see. With this plane in the hands of an invading power, this country would be wiped out before our defenses could be mobilized. Well, tell me about it. What kind of plane is it? The plane is revolutionary in design, Margot. It's equipped with a very intricate shortwave radio control outfit. By means of this shortwave, one of the planes can control up to 50 flying bombs. Flying bombs? That's precisely what they are. Unpiloted miniature airplanes. They're extremely fast, can be directed by the mothership at any target, from a speedy bombing plane to an army tank or battleship. As far as I know, they've only built three or four of the flying bombs. We have so little to work on. What can we do? We've got to find the shortwave station that broadcasts that record. But how can we ever find it? You know, Margot, the closer you get to a broadcasting station, the louder the program comes in. Yes, naturally. In my car, I have a simple device with a needle and dial that shows accurately when you're getting near a radio transmitter. With the aid of that device, Margot, we are sure to find that station. <laughs> It's any use of any further west, Lamont. And what does the dial read now, Margot? It's down to nine. Well, we'll go southeast now. The signal is getting stronger, Lamont. The dial reads 20 now. Good. Covered every inch of the city. 
There must be a road that goes further east from here. Well, the only place I know east of here is Robber's Reef. Do you think it could... Oh, it couldn't be out there. Why, there's only an old tumble-down house on the reef. I think you've hit it, Margot. How do you get there? There's an alley between a couple of these buildings here that leads out onto a sort of uh, short, narrow sandbar connecting the mainland with the end of the reef. Is that it there between those old buildings? It's so hard to see in this fog. There. Yes, that must be it. We'll try anyway. This is the gloomiest place I've ever seen. Lamont, look. The diary city. Good. We're headed right. Margo, I'm going to stop here. Now, you stay in the car. Keep the doors locked. Till I come out of the house. Please don't go in there, Lamont. I won't, Margo. But I think the shadow will pay a call. <laughs> That's awful funny. <laughs> what was that? Who's there? Only the shadow. Uh, the shadow? Well, who are you? Where are you hiding? I can't see you. I'm hiding in the shadows, where no man can see me. What'd you come here for? What do you want? I came to listen to you play that record you have in your hand. You can't do it. Nobody can hear these records, not even my son. Your son? Yes, this is his shortwave radio set. He lets me run it when he's at work nights. Did you make these records? Oh, you think I'm crazy? Of course not. Well, I don't even make sense. Some darn fool pays me five dollars to play them on the air. He says it's just a joke, and they do sound pretty funny. Who is he? And down if I know, he's some kind of a foreigner, comes here every so often, and leaves me some more of them to play. What's your name? Joe Ryan. <laughs> of course, Joe. I knew you, and all about these records. I was just testing you. Yeah. You and I are going to play a joke on our friend. I'll bring a record here in a little while, just like one of his. And I'll pay you $10 to play it in place of the one you've got there. You'll think it's a great joke. <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> You're twice as much of a darn fool as he is. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, You're paying me just twice as much. That's why the joke's on you. Uh, you think it's very funny, too. <laughs> well, here's to you, Corbin. I guess our work's about done. Tomorrow the army's new plane will disappear, and so will we. Yes, Bola. We'll be all finished up. It's been a pleasure working with you. Perhaps your methods are a bit uh, ruthless, but they produce results. Uh, shall we listen to your last shortwave uh, broadcast and record it? Uh, just as a souvenir. No time for it now. Well, all right. Tune it in. <laughs> uh, it's such a simple idea, but high-speed recording. No one in the world can understand that. Wait a minute. Listen, there's something wrong with that message. The good thing we are recording it. Oh, I think it's your imagination, Paul. It sounds like all the rest of your records. I know what my voice sounds like even at high speed. Now, play the recording back at a slow speed. Mm -hmm. Listen. Operator one. Operator one. Your plan to steal the new army bomber. It sounds very strange. If you do not want this That's plan revealed... Boy. Come at once to Joe Ryan shack on Robert's Reef. If you want your secret to remain a secret, come immediately, for I have things of grave importance to discuss with you. I'll be waiting for you, Operator One. This is the Shadow. The <laughs> Shadow? I've heard of him. He's dangerous. Perhaps we should leave tonight, Bola. You have the only plans and the designer's dead. Let's leave at once. Fool, we have yet to destroy the plane. Besides, Corbin, the shadow knows too much. Bola will teach him a lesson he has long needed. Bola will teach him not to meddle with affairs of importance. Let's go at once. Don't drive so fast, Corbin. This fog is pretty thick. But you told me to hurry. Yes. But it would be a pity to disappoint the shadow. Put out your headlights, Corbin. We turn on to Robert's Reef here. All right. Drive slower, you fool. I'm just barely creeping. Well, we can't take any chance on any accidents now. Look. What's that? 
right ahead of us. It's a car with no lights. Car with no lights. Coming in from Robber Street. It must be the shadow. Quick, Corbin, steer out of its way. I can't without going into the bay. It's going to hit us. Look out! Uh, uh, are you all right? Yes. Fortunately, we're both going very slowly. That's somebody getting out of the car. Stop where you are before I shoot. Corbin, there's a light on his face. It's a woman. Ah. I thought it was our friend, the Shadow. What are you doing out here, young lady? I lost my way. Then why are you driving without lights? Well, I thought I could see better that way in the fog. I don't believe you. Uh, Corbin, look in the car and see if there's anyone else. Yeah. Perhaps you brought someone out to Robber's Reef. Young I lady, don't know what I... what you're talking about. I tell you I lost my way. Well, we'll soon find out. You are coming with me. No one else in the car, Corbin. I'm good, Corbin. I'm sure there's nothing the matter with the car. Drive first into the water. Then bring ours to Joe Ryan's shack. The young lady and I are going to walk. Unless she is foolish and tries to run away. The Shadow's Adventure continues in just a moment. You know, friends, it's true that nothing succeeds like success. In fact... Nothing proves the merit of a product or the claims made for it as conclusively as its sales records. And the fact that blue coal ranks first in nationwide volume of sales is proof that it is a better anthracite. Countless thousands of you homeowners here and in communities the nation over have made that record possible. You've tried blue coal. You've compared it with other fuels. And you've kept blue coal's top ranking position unchallenged throughout the year. Now there's a real treat ahead for you homeowners who haven't yet tried blue coal. There's the satisfaction of knowing you're getting the most in heating comfort that money can buy when you order blue coal by name. For the harmless blue coloring which identifies blue coal also guarantees you far better quality, far better all-around performance. Just try blue coal. Compare it with the coal you're burning at present you'll see why blue coal is America's largest selling anthracite. You'll join those thousands of satisfied homeowners everywhere who know there's no substitute for blue coal for better heat with less furnace attention. So call your nearest blue coal dealer. His name is listed in the where to buy it section of your classified phone directory under the word blue coal. Been there, young lady. What? Oh, it's you, mister. Hey, did you hear it? Did you hear the funny record? Yes. Very funny. Where's the shadow? Uh, I don't know where he is. Said he was a friend of yours. He is a great friend of mine. I'd like to see him. Uh, you can't see him. Because even when he's here, he isn't. <laughs> he just talks to you. Ah, you're a fool, old man. Now, young lady, suppose you tell us what you know about the shadow. The shadow? I don't... don't pretend that you don't know him. You brought him here. All right, you, Corbin. Yes, Father. Take that piece of rope and tie the old man up. Hey, what for? I ain't done nothing. I just did what you told me to. Honest, I did. Shut up. I am well. No, you I don't, don't, young lady. Stay away from that door. Oh, please. Yes, Corbin. Oh, oh, Corbin, oh, give me a hand. Uh, young lady doesn't want to stay here. I heard her, too. Oh, oh, that's oh, it. That's oh, it. Tie her to this chair. Fine. Now we will see. Oh! What hit me? Paula, did you do that? You may thank the shadow, Corbin. The shadow? I can't see you. Where are you? You hear where my voice comes from, don't you? That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> I guess the last laugh belonged to Paula. It was too easy. Come, Corbin. We must get to the airdrome. We have work to do. Come, Corbin. Hurry. Hurry. Hurry, Corbin. The X-1 should land just at dawn. It will be light in a few moments. I'm doing the best I can. I'm still worried about that girl and the old man back on Robber's Reef. You should have gotten rid of them. As soon as I leave you at the airport, I will go back and close their mouths forever. Leave me at the airport? Certainly, Corbin. You're a pilot. 
It's up to you to fly the army ship out to sea alone and bury it. Yes, but suppose something happens when I get out over the ocean. Suppose they don't pick me up. This is dangerous, Paula. Ah, your strong suit is not courage, Corbin. But don't worry. You will be picked up as will I. The rest of our operatives are waiting even now on the boat, ten miles south of the Gordon Lightship. Do you still have the plans for the plane with you? Those plans have not been out of my sight since the day I got them. Uh, there's the entrance to the airport directly ahead. What do you plan to do, Paula? Simply this. The flight of this new plane has been veiled in greater secrecy. There will be but one guard at the airport to meet us. Huh? You and I represent ourselves as inspectors from the war department. Once we get aboard the plane, it is simple. We'll overcome the pilot and anyone else on board, and the rest will be up to you. Uh, here. We can stop right here now. Look, Paula. Look, there she is now. She's just landed. Uh, and look right behind her. There are the three flying bombs coming in in perfect formation. Come. Let's get over to the plane. Sorry, sir. No one's permitted on this field. Oh, I'm Harry Johnson from the War Department, and this is Mr. Andrews, my assistant. We have been sent out to check the landing of the new plane. Do you have any identification? Uh, identification? <laughs> Why, well, the best in the world. <laughs> Look, here are the plans for that ship. Is that good enough identification? <laughs> it sure is. Uh, who is piloting her? I believe Lieutenant Flint, sir. Well, I'd like to get his report as to how she handled on her trip east. Well, there he is, just coming out of the cabin. Uh-huh. Oh, Lieutenant Flint. Yes? Mr. Johnson and Mr. Andrews from the War Department, sir. Uh, we came up to get your report on the flight first hand. Did you fly in alone? Yes, sir. She handled beautifully in the air, and the flying bombs responded perfectly. Uh, I've gone over these plans here, of course, but... I would like to step into the cabin and see what it looks like. Oh, certainly. Right this way, sir. The pilot sits up ahead here in this heavily armored cockpit. Now, by closing this metal door, he can be shut off completely from the rest of the ship. Well, what is the purpose of that, Lieutenant? Uh, it's just an added armor protection for the pilot and the shortwave mechanism that controls the flying bombs. Now, but, Lieutenant, uh, can the pilot communicate with anyone in the other part of the ship when the door is closed? Yes, yes. Step into the cockpit here. Now, you see this microphone? Yes. That's connected with a loudspeaker installed in the rear of the ship so that the pilot constantly can be in contact with the rest of the crew, even if the armored door is shut. Well, where's the equipment for the control of the flying bombs? That's right here, sir. Uh-huh. See this dial with numbers up to 50? You just set the indicator at any one of the numbers, and that throws the flying bomb of that particular number in line with the corresponding controls so that it can be manipulated separately. And uh, these three dials here control speed, direction, and altitude. It's perfectly simple. Is there anything more I can show you, sir? No. You have been a great help, Lieutenant. Uh, what is that switch in back of us? Huh? Oh, this? Well, that's the... Oh! All right, Corbin, take off immediately. As soon as you get in motion, I'll push the pilot out and jump out myself and tell the guard that you are running away with the tip. Uh, there. Uh, there he goes. Now, hurry, Corbin, take her off. Good luck, Corbin. I'm going to jump now. Help! Stop! Help! Stop! Well, Corbin, your plan has worked perfectly. Up to now. What? What? Who said that? <laughs> the shadow. But how did you get here? I came with you in the car from Ryan's shack on Robber's Reef. You cannot escape from the shadow. But Paula killed you. No. He only shot at my voice. Where are you now? I am in the shadows of the cabin in back of you. But I can see you well enough to shoot you if you don't bring this plane down immediately. No, don't shoot. I'll bring it down. Only don't shoot. Open the door. Open that door, I tell you. <laughs> well, Mr. Shadow, you can shoot your heart's content. Perhaps you heard Lieutenant Flynn say that the pilot's cockpit is well armored. Corbett, bring this plane down. I'll bring it down, all right. The three flying bombs in the ocean ten miles south of the Gordon Lightship. But when a plane lands, you will land in it alone. For I will leave it by parachute before it goes into its last power dive. What do you think of that, Mr. Shadow? Why don't you speak? Shadow, can't you hear me? 
<laughs> I hear you all right, Corbin. And thanks for the suggestion about a parachute. It was nice of you. I'm going to leave you, Corbin, but not for long. I'll chase you to the ends of the earth. You'll never get away. Goodbye, Corbin. <laughs> What's the matter with those mechanics? Can't they get that pursuit ship started? Look at that plane gain altitude. Take it easy, Lieutenant Flynn. The mechanics are warming it up as fast as they can. Uh, How's your head? You got a nasty crack. It's all right. It's all right. Wait till I get my hands on that guy. Where did the other one go to? In the excitement, he ducked into a car and beat it. He sent out a police call? Sure, first thing. Hey, look. Look. Someone just bailed out of the ship. Now, that's funny. The parachute's opening, but I can't see anybody. That's the darndest thing I ever saw in my life. Look, the number one flying bomb is diving for the parachute. Will it explode if it hits the parachute? Once the firing mechanism is released, it'll go off if it hits anything. Oh, my Lord. It just missed the parachute. And it's diving. It's diving straight towards us. It's out of control. But it's... I can't... Wait, no. I... You all right? Yeah. Yeah, but boy... I'd hate to be any closer. What happened to that parachute? It came down right in back of us. But I still can't see anyone. Well, I can't stop now. i got to take off and force that guy down. Lieutenant Flynn. Huh? I'm hearing things. Boy, I must have gotten a worse smack on the head than I thought. No. It's not your imagination, Lieutenant. You're hearing the voice of the shadow. The shadow? Well, who are you? Where are you? How did you get here? I'm in the cockpit right behind you. And we have no time for explanations. Lieutenant, you and I have caught up with a gang of international spies. Oh, so that's their game. Well, how do you know this? I've been with them all night, followed their every move. Perhaps you saw me bail out of the stolen plane. Yeah, and you nearly got blown to kingdom come by that flying bomb. Too close for comfort. What is your first move, Lieutenant? Well, I'm going to fly close to the stolen plane and call by radio. And if that crook won't listen to reason, I'll force him down. Good. You're almost close enough now. Yeah. He sees it. Look, one of the flying bombs is turning. It's heading right for us. Can you turn out of its way? I'll try. Those things are too fast. They can turn on a dime. Look at that thing fly. Your only chance is to shoot it down. Can you hit it? I've got to. Good shooting, Lieutenant. My Lord. Look, that madman has released the one remaining bomb. Yes. He's right behind us. Our only chance is to put this plane into a power dive. Here it goes. Lieutenant, it's still right on our tail. If I could only get to that rear machine gun. I'll handle it. You know how to use it? Yes. You got it, Shadow. Wow, that was close. Now I think Corbin will listen to reason. I'll call him by short wave. Calling plane X-1. Calling plane X-1. Corbin, this is your last warning. Land that plane. No, no, don't shoot me down. Don't shoot. I'll land the plane. Hold me. Don't, don't shoot. Turn immediately and go back to the airport. All right. All right. I'm turning. All right. That's a good day's work finished. For you, but not for me. Now, what do you mean, Shadow? There are several things left undone. The Coast Guard must be instructed to pick up a boat ten miles south of Gordon Light. It has Baller's operatives on board. Oh, well, we can do that right now. As soon as we see Corbin safely landed and in the hands of the guards, you must fly me to Robber's Reef. Baller's headed there and he must be captured. I'll call the ground at once and have the police notified to follow up. Who's there? Paula. What do you want? What are you doing here? Well, I'm glad to see my little birds have not flown. And now, young lady, there are a few questions I would like to ask you. Can't you loosen these ropes a little? They're cutting my arms. In a few minutes, they won't hurt your arms anymore. Nothing will hurt you anymore. Was that a boat or, or did a plane land here? A plane? You couldn't land a plane on Robert's Reef. Say, Mr. 
When are you going to untie me? I'm not going to untie you. I'm going to kill you. Me? I ain't done nothing. What do you want to kill me for? I only did what you told me. I did... <laughs> <laughs> you are the only one left, young lady. The shadow is dead, and you... Who's there? Who closed that door? The shadow. But the shadow is dead. No, Bora, the shadow is not dead. Put that gun away. I showed you once that you could not shoot a voice. No, but I can shoot a very lovely young lady shadow. And I don't think you'd care for that. I'm going out this door, and I'm going to shut it after me. If it opens, I shoot. And if I don't hit you, Shadow, I'm going to kill this girl. You can't stop Paula. No one can stop Paula. But the police, I'll shoot them like dogs. I'll kill every one of them. I'll kill them. They got it. You all right, Margot? Yes, Lamont. Here, I'll cut these ropes. We have to get out of here. Thank you, Lamont. Well, Margot... They've killed Bola. I hate to see any man die by violence. But if that man dedicates his life to the evil task of plotting and espionage against a friendly country, he faces but one fate. And that fate is justly death by violence. <laughs> And now here's John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good afternoon, everyone. I think it's a fact that of all things a man owns and operates, he knows less about his furnace than anything else. Now, the weather this time of year, as Ken Roberts said earlier in the program, is particularly treacherous. You've got to pay strict attention to the control of your fire and your furnace dampers to keep the house from becoming chilled off or suddenly overheated as the temperature falls and rises outside. So if you have any question in your mind about damper control, or if you want to be sure you're operating your furnace in the most efficient and most economical manner, here's what I suggest you do. Call your nearest blue coal dealer. Ask him to send a John Barclay serviceman to check up on your furnace. John Barclay men are trained heating experts. They can show you how to get the best possible heating results. And there's absolutely no charge or obligation of any sort for their advice. Always feel free to call on your blue coal dealer. I thank you. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is now on sale at your local newsstand. Same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen, and be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid...